Okay, I'm gonna cover how I sharpen the blade in my cabinet scraper and what I use it for and some problems when I first got this, what I had to do to uh, solve these problems, which was it was leaving some lines in it as I would, you know, um, plane the wood with it. And that was due to the, the base itself. I did already sharpen, or I didn't sharpen this, but I did flatten the blade already. So let's take this blade out. The first thing I wanna do is undo this screw all the way Make sure there's no pressure on the blade. I just undo the screws. And the blade just slides right out. So the first thing I want to do is I got my little, this right here is uh, to tell me the degrees. I'm going to put a 45 on one of the edges. Now, once I put this 45 on there, I'm, not, I'm just doing this for the video, but I wouldn't touch this again. I'm going to set the 45 on here, grind it on there, and then from there I would just leave it. So I'm just going to set it. If it's not exact, I'm not really worried about it. Looks like there's a 51 on there already. So yeah, I'm gonna go about a f whatever degree it looks like they got on there. It's about 54. Like I said, I usually don't. Now I got a thousand grit stone. I'm gonna put some water on it. I usually don't uh, do this. It usually just takes really just a few seconds to resharpen the blade or create the hook on the blade. I don't want to say sharpen it, but this right here is just to grind it flat. Now if the thing, the angle was really off, I would go back and forth like this, but. I don't need to do that. Now I'm just going to check it. See what it looks like. I'm going to hit that a few more times. Yeah, that's, that's good right there. Now I can feel the burr on the back side of that, so we're gonna get that burr off of there. All I'm gonna do is just take it, push it down. And that's it. Now the edge is pretty sharp. So now let's go ahead and put the hook on it. Now I'm gonna put the hook on it. Now I have my angle facing away from me and I'm just gonna make about five or six passes on it to round it over and I'm gonna come about to here. But what I'm gonna do is each pass, I'm gonna change the angle as I'm burnishing it. There's three, four, five, and then one more. That's it. Now I can feel I got a really nice hook on there. So now what I want to do is go ahead and put it back in. Now the hook is going to face out. I want to slide it in through the bottom. And I'm going to put it on a piece of wood this way. And then I'm just going to kind of just slightly push down on the blade itself, tighten these by hand. Then I'll get a screwdriver. Now let's just say this thing starts cutting because I'm going to use the back screw here, this is what's gonna push the blade down for me to cut. Now it really doesn't push the whole blade down, it kinda creates a, a con, kinda creates a bow in it. But sometimes, if I don't like the way it's cutting, I'll take a piece of paper and I'll put it underneath here and then adjust the blade or I might take a piece of paper, fold it, and then use that to gauge it. Now. One other thing I didn't show real quick, I need to go back and show you this. Um, 
I do this so this way the corners don't tear into the wood. So let's go back to the honing, or let's, yeah, let's go back here to my diamond bit. Okay, now I don't want the corners digging into the wood, so I do this just about on all of the my blades that I sharpen. I'm just going to press down on the corner and try to get rid of that corner, round it over. I don't really care about the corner. It's just not going to really, like I said, it's just going to dig in the wood if you go take your blade down too far, especially if you're using the piece of paper. Like I'm going to, like uh, I was showing you just a second ago. There, because you know, usually you're not taking the whole width of this off. You can, but usually I don't. Now let's put it back in there. Now again, I make sure that my screw in the back here is all the way out. There's no pressure. I'm going to slide it in from the bottom again, put it down. And then, uh, like I said, we're just going to go ahead and do this, put the paper underneath of it. I'm going to hold the blade down and then tighten the screws up. And then we're going to run it through there real quick, run it over the wood. Okay, now the next thing I want to do is get some paste wax. I'm going to put it on the very bottom. Now, I already grind, ground the bottom of this before. But you can see that I have some scratches in this. And what ends up happening when I first bought this, I had to grind this all the way around the edges because it had burrs on it, which created scratches in the wood. And as you can see here, I've hit some metal pieces with it, which created this. And then it started leaving deep gouges in the wood again. So I had to go back in with the thousand grit and I just put it on the thousand grit and just kind of just eliminated the burrs. I'll never get those out of there, but they don't hurt anything and then they're not going to affect anything. So let's go ahead and get the paste wax. Now the paste wax is just going to help it glide along the wood. That's about all you need to do. Now let's see where we're at with this. Now as you can see it's not doing anything. We're going to adjust the knot back here. I, now I feel it engaging. Just going to give it a snug and there we go. Now this does have some gouges already in it so I'm going to tighten it down just a little bit more and you can see that the shavings is coming off is just really thin now I've got gouges here in this piece of wood so that's what I'm basically going to try and get rid of and it, the thing about this these things seem to clog really fast a couple so it is giving me a nice little finish. If this was cherry, probably wouldn't be so nice. It will tear out. Now I am pushing it at an angle as you can see. You can go straight however you want, whatever works for you. I just do this because this is what works for me. Now it's starting to take away some gouges right here. I had some more in there, but this thing already took it off, but you can, maybe you can see it right there. And I got one right there. I had some in through here, but this thing's already removed it just in the, two, the few passes that I made. And as you can see, it, it does take off quite a bit of material. And like I said, this thing does, these things get clogged up pretty quickly. Now you can take it off as, you know, more material if you want to by just adjusting the, the screw here on the back, but this right here is just fine for me. Now it jumps because I don't have anything holding the back end of this thing down. And I usually never do, but I'm gonna get a vise that I can clamp on here and eliminate that problem.
Now for me, like I said, running this thing at an angle works great. It's, it takes out all the scratches. Overall, these things are great and handy to have as long as you know how to sharpen the blade. Now, sharpening the blade may be different for somebody else. They might have a little bit more of an angle on it, put more of a hook on it or something like that. I do just what works for me and how I use it. Now, these are a great little handy tool to have in the shop. I'm going to use this basically for something like if I got some scratches in, I don't really feel like getting out my, I got a five and a half jack plane. So if I don't feel like getting that out, I'm going to get this thing out and it's going to make quick work of it. Depends on how deep that scratch is. Then if it's pretty deep, I'm going to get a five and a half out. But this right here works great for, as you saw, it took out those uh, scratches. Now let's try it on some cherry and see what we got. Now this surface is... This right here is pretty smooth. This right here would be ready for a finish. Now on the cherry, I've had it to where it really, I've had to go on and use a card scraper in order to get the finish to where it's like this piece right here has got some different, the, the grain's in different directions. And because the grain's running kind of crazy on this piece right here, you know, even if I use a low angle plane, it could still have some tear out. But, this, uh, I was doing some on this a little earlier and it really didn't come out as smooth as I wanted, but yeah, as you can see, I got a dip here because I was playing with it earlier and I didn't really take off as much of that end as I did on this. Now on this, I need to really push that blade down a little bit more. But this is actually coming out pretty smooth. I would say that it's, uh, if I wanted to finish this, it, it would uh, work just fine. And I'd say that coming out really nice. But I would still, even though I'm using this, and it's coming out nice, I can feel some of the grain. Like over here, it's really nice, but you get here, grain's really kind of shot. Yeah, see, now that's not as smooth. This is where I would just come in with the scraper. Now, I don't even know which edge is just what I think. And I would just come over here and just do like this. Now, on the maple, which fell on the floor, it came out a lot smoother than it did here on the cherry. But I would just take a scraper, come back behind it, and do like this to get the grain. Because what I feel is like little hairs. And now it's starting to smooth out. So all I'm doing with this is just smoothing it back out to a really nice smooth surface. Now the only thing with cherry though, it is blotchy. So even if I take some wax, you see that it, so you would want to condition the wood. Now that lyric dude looks really good. Yeah, see, now if you ignored all of that, it'd be all right. But you can still see that this still kind of, but it is smooth. It's silky smooth. So now let's do this one. Now this, this uh, maple feels, it's silky smooth. And of course, when you put the wax on it or when you put your finish on it, you know, it, you can always make it smooth. So if you are thinking about getting a cabinet scraper, I do recommend getting one. They do come in quite handy to use. Um, now when I was checking them out, what sold me on the Veritas versus some other brands was I like the knobs on them. I thought they were pretty Fantastic. And then it's, I like using a screwdriver. Some of them had the flat wing nut that you use tighten with my hand. And I didn't really want that. Uh, I just thought this looked more solid as a piece. 
and I thought it would hold up a lot better if I had it where I could just tighten it by screw. And then I also like this right here. This is a good solid knob. Some I saw, I really didn't care for the knob. So this is why I bought the Veritas one over some other ones. Overall, it's a great tool. This is one that you want to experiment with and find out what, what uh, you can get out of it, like sh how to sharpen the blade. Like I said, I do five to six and then I round them over on each pass. So you might do it a little bit differently. Rounding over the corners is another thing I do so that way I don't gouge the wood with the corner in case you put it in crooked or something like that. Then you don't have to go back and try to fix some gouge that you created. Uh, if you happen to have it round over, all it's going to do is really just take off mature on one side. You can readjust it, go back and then taking it. Also, sometimes using a paper will add just that hair thickness that you need to be able to take the shavings off. Um, how you use this really is it's going to basically be up to how you prefer to use it. But I do recommend having one. So that ends this episode. I'm Ever Short, the Hoosier Craftsman. Happy and safe woodworking.